Deers might see sugar as the enemy, but for the rest of the world, sugar isn't just a sweet ingredient found in almost everything we eat. It's brown gold that fuels a global sugar industry. So have you ever wondered how millions of tons of sugar cane are produced every year? The journey of this humble plant begins in vast fields, where sugarcane is harvested using massive one-of-a-kind machinery. From there, those sweet, juicy stalks are transported to modern factories, where under the hands of skilled workers and cutting-edge machines, they're transformed not only into sparkling white refined sugar crystals, but every remaining part is also used to create eco-friendly products and livestock feed. Today, we'll take you inside some of the world's most advanced sugar factories and uncover the many fascinating secrets behind this incredibly versatile plant. All of that and more right here in this video. Let's get started. Now imagine yourself standing in the middle of a sugarcane field that stretches all the way to the horizon, where towering, sturdy stalks reach up under the sun. Welcome to Brazil, the kingdom of sugarcane. Every year, this country grows over 700 million tons of sugar cane, more than anywhere else on earth. But don't let the plant's humble appearance fool you. From this seemingly simple grass, humans have built a massive industry worth over 40 billion US dollars. And here's a sweet little fact you might not know, just 10 sugar cane stalks are enough to produce a one kilogram bag of sugar. Compared to other crops like corn, wheat, or fruits, which contain less than 10% sugar, sugarcane stands out with a natural sugar content of up to 16%, making it one of the sweetest and most efficient raw materials for sugar production. And it all begins with the harvest season, when the sugarcane fields come alive, ready to kick off a brand new production cycle. Before the harvest season officially begins, farmers in many sugarcane growing regions choose to burn the fields. It might sound unusual, but the goal is to remove the dry leaves and unnecessary tops of the sugar cane. This practice helps clean the stalks, reducing the amount of unwanted material like fallen leaves, organic debris, and insects, which in turn makes the harvesting process quicker and more efficient. Plus, collecting only the sugar-rich stalks helps cut down on transportation costs. However, because this method produces a significant amount of smoke and harmful emissions, sugarcane burning is now strictly regulated. In some areas where it's still allowed, burning must follow specific time frames and environmental conditions to minimize its impact on air quality and public health. In light of these concerns, harvesting fresh, unburned sugarcane using modern machinery is increasingly being encouraged and is quickly becoming the new standard. Sugarcane harvesters are engineered with high precision, capable of cutting close to the ground without damaging the roots, allowing the plant to regenerate for future harvests. As the machine moves along the rows, a system of sharp, continuously rotating blades slices the cane stalks cleanly. At the same time, the leaves and tops are removed directly on board using a smart separation system combined with powerful fans. These unwanted parts are returned to the field, thus forming a natural mulch layer that helps retain soil moisture and boosts fertility. The valuable cane stalks, rich in sugar and economic value, are pre-processed on the spot, cut into short segments, and sent to a large holding chamber at the back of the machine. A modern harvester can handle between 80 to 120 tons of sugar cane per hour, equivalent to the workload of dozens of manual laborers. This significantly speeds up the harvest process, cuts costs, and is especially well-suited for large-scale sugarcane farms. Once full, the chopped cane is swiftly transferred to waiting trucks at the edge of the field, ready to be transported straight to the factory. This ensures the cane remains fresh and retains its optimal sugar content. After harvesting, millions of tons of sugarcane are transported to the factory by truck or train, depending on the region. The cane must be delivered to the mill as quickly as possible to prevent dehydration and loss of sweetness. Juice samples from different farms are collected separately and analyzed in on-site laboratories to determine the sugar content of each batch. Before processing begins, the sugar cane is passed through a high-pressure water spray system to be thoroughly washed. This step removes soil, sand, dust, and any remaining impurities clinging to the cane stalks, ensuring the raw material meets the necessary cleanliness standards. 
Thorough cleaning not only protects the crushing equipment from damage, but also plays a crucial role in preserving the quality of the raw sugar cane juice, the primary ingredient used to produce sugar. After being washed, the long sugar cane stalks are fed into specialized cutting machines to be chopped into smaller pieces. The stalks are cut into short segments to make them easier to feed into the crushing system. On its way to the crushing machine, each cane stalk passes through a set of interlocking metal gears that tear it apart with a processing speed of up to 30 tons an hour. This system keeps the factory buzzing nonstop. If you still can't picture how much that is, one dairy cow would need around 40 days to chew through that much sugar cane, assuming she doesn't get bored and wander off halfway through. Next, these pieces pass through powerful crushers equipped with heavy rollers that continuously press and squeeze the cane to extract raw juice. Thanks to this roller system, the sugar content is extracted as efficiently as possible, maximizing the output of the entire process. Once the crushing is done, the leftover dry pulp, known as bagas, is far from waste. Instead, it's smartly collected and reused. Meanwhile, the raw cane juice becomes the key ingredient for the next stages of refined sugar production. Have you ever experienced the scent of a mountain of sugar cane pulp filling the air? I bet it's one of the sweetest and most soothing smells that could ever make you feel truly satisfied in life. And now, prepare to be amazed by how factories make almost full use of sugar cane bagas, turning it into eco-friendly products like plates, cups, and even paper. The bagas is then collected and transported to specialized recycling facilities by truck or through a centralized transfer system. At the recycling plant, the bagas goes through a high-pressure water washing system to remove impurities like soil, sand, shredded cane peel, and any remaining sugar. After washing, it is either mechanically pressed or lightly dried to prepare it for the grinding stage. Once cleaned, the bagas is fed into grinding machines to break down its fibrous structure. The resulting mixture is then cooked at high temperatures, sometimes with a small amount of natural additives like starch or recycled paper pulp to enhance the material's stickiness and flexibility. The processed bagas pulp is poured into pre-designed heated metal molds shaped like plates, cups, bowls, or food containers. Here, the hot pressing process takes place at temperatures ranging from 160 to 200 degrees Celsius. Under the combined effect of heat and pressure, the pulp gradually hardens and takes the shape of the mold, while any remaining moisture is evaporated. As a result, the product not only forms a fixed shape but also gains a stable, firm surface ready for the next finishing steps. After molding, the semi-finished products go through a final drying stage to reduce moisture content to below 8%. Next comes the finishing stage, where excess edges are trimmed and the rims are smoothed to ensure both visual appeal and safe use. Finally, a water-resistant coating made from bio-based materials or plant-based wax is sprayed onto the surface, allowing the product to safely hold hot or liquid foods. The finished products undergo quality inspection and are then packaged using paper or cardboard materials to minimize environmental impact. From there, these bagas-based plates, cups, and containers make their way to supermarkets, food stores, or restaurants. In reality, products made from sugarcane bagas can biodegrade within 60 to 90 days and are considered a much more environmentally friendly option compared to plastic, which takes 500 to 1,000 years to decompose. Plastic is one of the biggest environmental challenges today. But the issue is, Bagas products require proper industrial composting conditions to decompose that quickly. If they are thrown into regular landfills, the decomposition time can sometimes be even longer. And now, let's dive into the most anticipated part, the sugar factory, where those sweet drops of sugar cane juice are transformed into the pure white sugar crystals we use every day. After crushing, the raw sugar cane juice still contains fine impurities like fibers, dust, and organic residue. To purify it, lime is added to the juice. The lime reacts with the impurities, causing them to precipitate out, making the juice clearer, a crucial step before concentration. Next, the juice enters a multi-effect evaporation system, typically made up of three to five connected evaporators. 
In this system, water is gradually removed by heating the juice at temperatures ranging from 70 to 150 degrees Celsius, depending on each stage and the pressure inside. Through this process, the juice thickens and turns into a pale yellow syrup with a noticeably denser consistency. This concentrated syrup sets the stage for the crystallization step, where sweet crystals begin to form from the thick golden liquid. To begin the crystallization process, seed sugar crystals are added to the concentrated syrup, which is then slowly cooled over several hours. Sugar gradually begins to crystallize. The resulting mixture is then transferred to a centrifuge. The centrifuge spins at high speed to separate the sugar crystals from the remaining molasses. This is the key step that defines the difference between raw brown sugar and refined white sugar, a question many people have long wondered about. Brown sugar retains about 3-5% to of natural molasses, giving it a rich brown color and a distinctive caramel-like aroma. While white sugar is refined to the point that it contains up to 99.9% .9 pure sucrose, resulting in its bright appearance and clean, pure sweetness. After centrifugation, the sugar crystals are still slightly moist, so they are set into a drying system to remove all remaining moisture. This prevents clumping and extends shelf life. Once dried, the sugar is ready to move on to the refining stage, where it will be purified to achieve its final sparkling white form. To produce pure white sugar, a decolorization process is carried out. First, raw refined sugar is dissolved in hot water at around 80 degrees Celsius. The solution is then heated and filtered through layers of sand and gravel, followed by activated carbon columns to remove the color. Finally, the solution is centrifuged once more to obtain pure white sugar crystals. Once the pure white sugar crystals are obtained, they are cooled and fed into a fully automated packaging line within a sealed, hygienic environment. The first step is precise weighing. Electronic scales measure out exact portions based on preset weights. Next, the sugar is dispensed into preformed plastic bags. These bags are pulled continuously from large PE film rolls, cut to size, and sealed with heat. This process is incredibly fast. Dozens to hundreds of bags can be packed every minute. After sealing, the bags pass through a metal detector to ensure no foreign objects are present. Once approved, the bags are printed with expiration dates and traceability codes, then packed into large cardboard boxes for distribution to the market.